th there's one player who maybe has been flying under the radar in the summer league, maybe not. That's Thon Maker, taken 10th overall by the Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks already have the Greek freak, the six foot 11, seven foot point guard, as they choose to use him, along with Jabari Parker coming back from injury, and uh, Chris Middleton, underrated three and D two guard, uh, Greg Monroe, who seems to be on the trade block ever since he arrived. I like what I see with Thon Maker, and and I don't care if he is forty years old, like Mark Cuban says. <laughs> I, I think anyone with that size, and, and and he's got a good frame. I think he could tack on 15, 20 pounds of muscle and still be fluid. He's got good hands, good feet. He's just raw. I actually think that that was one of the smarter picks, and and they're going to look really good. Uh, uh, do you think I'm uh, I'm drinking the uh, the buck punch here, or do you agree? No, I think that in time, I think they'll be okay. And plus, they have an asset that if it all falls apart, they can move. Uh, that does have potential. He is raw. He does have energy and a motor. He only shot 37% in summer league, which is so somewhat troubling. Um, but the level of competition has risen, risen a great deal since he was in high school a couple of months ago. So um, you have to look at that as a factor. Look at the the, the, the notion that when he gets with the big club, because summer league team is not the same as the big club. You have one of the smartest coaches, in my opinion, who should have been coach of the year the year before when Budenholzer won it, and Jason Frederick Cade, um, who um, is a guy that I think they will trust a lot. You know, and having that kind of length and that kind of flexibility defensively, because they're going to be a defensive team. John Henson, Thom Maker, Giannis. Uh, Michael Plumley. Carter William, come on, man. All right, we'll throw Miles in there <laughs> just because he got that money. You know, but lengthwise and defensively, they're going to be a beast. Where they have issues is shooting the ball. And the guys who they have to shoot the ball don't necessarily play that much. When you talk, other than Chris Middleton, who can be, you know, streaky at, at best, you brought in Rashawn Vaughn from, from uh, UNLV. Ah, he's young. I don't think he'll be there next year. But – you don't have real shooters on that team yet. But you know, I don't know if you need shooters in so much right now, especially regular season. When you have all those guys who have length and can defend and get out and But get, it looks like Don like, can shoot. Like he's got a decent stroke. He just needs to get a little more consistency, right? Like maybe that's mm -hmm. the plan because they're like Reg Monroe and, and Jabari aren't going to work. Like I actually think that the weird guy on this team is Jabari. Um, I, I actually think so. Think, nah? No, nah, it's Greg. Greg Monroe does not fit. One of these kids is doing his own thing, and that's him. He's out of here. But Jabari Park is a good fit for them because I, th I think he gives them the kind of stability and flexibility uh, to do a couple of different things with lineups that Jason Kidd can't necessarily do with Giannis. He can't necessarily do it with Don Maker. He can't do it with John Henson. He can't do it with M uh, M MCW. So uh, Jabari is a good fit for them. I think he's going to be that – if he can work his way into a kind of – I don't, I don't want to call him a Draymond type role, but something like that where he can be a star as a utility guy, right? Which is kind of crazy, but Do you really see him it, as a utility guy considering he may be the best scorer on that team, just naturally gifted scorer? At the end of the day, it's going to end up being the only way he stays in that lineup because they're not going to make him the go-to guy if they drafted Maker and they believe so much in Giannis. That they're going to make him the point the guard. point guard, though, yeah, and right. Maker is a stretch four, stretch five with defense. Like, I still think there's place as the main score with Giannis and Thon, and Thon being secondaries. I, I don't agree. Uh, I, I, you know, and that's why I said I was reluctant to call him a utility player. He's probably going to be their alpha for right now, but there's nothing in the future that's or nothing in the way they've started to put this team together that says Jabari is necessary the future for them, right? And so in, in the immediate future, I think that he's going to be that guy that you talk about. But I think they're really trying to build around Giannis and Thon a lot, like a whole lot. And I can see that in the way that Jason Kidd uh, uh, coaches them. I, th I think that Tyler Ennis gets a, another chance uh, as a backup there. I don't know that uh, MCW will be a long-term fit for them, you know, uh, especially if they're saying that Giannis is going to start at the point. What does that say about, uh, you know, is he a two? No, uh, um, NCW is not a two. He can't shoot. So at the end of the day, who's that guy? You know that Chris Middleton's next to him. Who's playing the three? Jabari. At the four, like Greg Monroe. Is he not a bit two. slow for the three? I don't know. Well, like he's what, what, what does he play? Three or four? He's dropped some weight since the, the surgery, 
And I don't like him at the four, but he does have he he's got a good wingspan and a good height for a three. So as long as he can put the speed in there, you I don't know. But, but you can't but stop Sean at the five right now. He will get exposed like dog nuts. It's not going to happen. Well, I don't think you could start Thon. Period. Right now, but yeah. at the same point, you need to start someone who can guard a point guard. Though, like, are you really going to put Chris Middleton on their point? Because I get playing. Uh, Giannis at the point guard offensively, but defensively, they're going to need to start someone who's a little bit smaller, uh, which is why with my crazy uh, trade mind, um, I actually thought, and I want and I want to get your opinion on this, the perfect trade. You take Jabari, who may have had a point or might, may not, and send him to a team who needs a three and who has a glut of fours and point guards, Phoenix Suns, and take back your pick of Bender or, or Chris and take back uh brandon knight who was there and that was a mistake to trade him for carter you bring back brandon knight play him at point guard he can be the three and d guy while giannis runs the point and then and then you're bringing up a front court of of huge guys like giannis marquise chris and thon maker that's still too young you're gonna you you need a, a good mix of veterans and, and young players in order to compete in the national basketball association I think if you want to be in rebuild mode for the next five years, you continue to, to move pieces like that because Phoenix, they're not going to do anything in the next couple of years. I don't care. They get they have to figure out what they're going to do with Bledsoe. Uh, Brandon Knight gets injured too too much for me. And and at the end of the day, like I don't really see what their philosophy is right now other than having a great healthcare system. I don't know. They've got right. two great young power forwards who I think could be very dynamic. I'm actually a very bullish on Alex Len. I know a lot of people aren't. And then Devin Booker, who's looking like he could be with a little bit more de defensive polish the next Clay Thompson. I don't know. Like I think I'm a so, little, I'm a little bit more bullish on this team uh, than you are. I feel I'm cool with with Devin Booker. I think he's going to be a star. With the rest of the program, like what do they build around him? Do they are they building around Devin Booker and what he does? Like what is the program then? And I think Earl Watson is a good coach for that team. I think he's a very good coach for that team because the guys already trust him as a former player who basically just stepped off the court. You know, he, he's definitely not Derek Fisher, but he's a guy who understands because he's watched a lot of games from the bench that, you know, how to utilize these guys and these young guys. He's going to let them get out and run, but at the same time, give them some structure, which will help. Um, you saw a lot of that at the end of the season where they were trying to build around Devin Booker and say, okay, can can he be that guy? I just don't. See I don't think he can be a number one guy, though. Like, like I think to me, it's the same problem with Demar Derozan. Like, I think, and even Clay Thompson. Like, I don't think either one of those guys are number one guys, and that's why I was trying to maneuver in my mind bringing maybe a Jabari, and and you hope one of them turns into a number is, one. Is Jabari a number one guy though in the NBA? Is he a number I, one guy? Uh, He's not Grant Hill. He's not Kyrie Irving. I'm thinking about Duke, Duke dudes who were supposed to be number ones. You know, he's more Christian Leitner than he is uh, Grant. Well, he's more Glenn Robinson than anything, right? Like uh, the big dog back in the day. Like he can score. Like I think in the right system, he can he can be your, your number one scorer. Can he be your best overall player? Probably not. But I think like I think Jabari Parker can be your number one scorer. And if you surround and I, and I think that's what they're trying to do in Milwaukee: take the I, number one scorer, surround him with huge talent all around and your argument sounds like what you're saying about demar uh, uh demar derozan then. he's your number one scorer but is he a number one guy but the problem is milwaukee is way younger and and there's way and in my mind I, as crazy it sounds there's less holes look, going forward like there's a huge hole at power forward in toronto at small forward carroll really didn't show up in the playoffs like i look I'm biggest Bruno fan at all in, in the world, but like I'm not going to pretend he's coming in next year and being their savior. And Kyle Lowry's on the wrong side of 30. Like it's a bit of a different argument, especially how they move the ball and such. But I get what you're talking about in terms of that. So can Thon be that guy? Just just pulling it back to how we started. Can he be a top three player on your team in your estimation right now? If we had to call it, not right now. No, not right now. He has to learn a whole lot about basketball. And even more about basketball in the NBA, because I think that people have this misconception about talent and how it applies in the NBA. Don Maker has talent. Does he have the talent that fits in the NBA? Summer League is one thing. And again, I said he's shot 37% other than dunks and stuff. And he has some range, but it has to be consistent. And you see the, the difference in the guys who played like Summer League the year before 
And then they came back and played summer league. Tyus, uh, Tyus Jones in Minnesota looks like a totally Powell. different player. Norman Powell, like, but I was always high on Norman Powell even before he got to Toronto. That's a whole other conversation. Um, but like these guys look different after a year of seasoning. So I think the book is still open on Thon Maker being that guy eventually. We'll see what he can do throughout the season. Um, and then he comes back. He will play summer league next year. He should play summer league next year. And I mean, it could go a couple of different ways with Thon Maker. Like, can we call him Canadian? So Thon Maker could end up being Andrew Wiggins, or he can end up being Anthony Bennett. Oh man, you can't do that. I, I, <laughs> We we, we we will see. Are you ready to rock? Well, get ready this Saturday, July 23rd at Oscar Peterson Park there in Mount to Real, Montreal. What's up, baby? Ready to go. Full Court 21 Canada, uh, all across the world, all across the country, but coming into your area. Make sure you sign up at Eventbrite. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And do remember, do remember, you against the world, no teammates, bring your game, do work.